let's take a look at some tougher conversions using conversion factors, starting back from the beginning, just to kind of review. So first things first, we have a tortoise that moves 0 0.8 kilometers. Okay, I want to convert that into regular meters first and foremost. So all I'm going to do to start with is rewrite my measurement, 0 0.8 km for kilometers. So that way I don't accidentally put this number somewhere in the conversion factor. My conversion factor is the fraction, the ratio between the old unit that I'm trying to get rid of and the new unit, where the old unit I'm trying to get rid of is kilometers and the new unit is meters. I want to get rid of kilometers. I want to pick up meters as my new unit. The way to do this is by knowing how this fraction bar works, where the top, the numerator, gets multiplied and the bottom is going to get divided. Just like with any fraction, the bottom part is basically just division. So if I can get kilometers divided by another kilometers unit, anything divided by itself cancels out to one and it essentially goes away in your math. So if I take kilometers divided by kilometers, it will cancel into one just like 4 divided by 4, or 20 divided by 20, or 1 million divided by 1 million. All I have to do is make sure that my kilometers unit is on the bottom part of this conversion factor. So that way, whenever I go and multiply by the top and divide by the bottom, my kilometers unit is going to cancel out. My new unit, therefore, is going to go on the top. 95% of the time, this is how your conversion factor is going to be set up, with the old unit on the bottom and the new unit on the top. Okay, once I have the units in the right spots, now I just have to figure out what I put here as the numbers to multiply and divide by. And this is just the relationship between kilometers and meters. So if I go down to my set of conversion factors down here, hey, there it is. One kilometer is the same as 1,000 meters. I just have to make sure I put those numbers in the right spots. That the 1,000 goes with the meters, and the 1 goes with the kilometers. It's 1,000 meters in 1 kilometer, not 1,000 kilometers in 1 meter, right? Meters is a smaller unit, so it takes more of them to equal the same as 1 kilometer. The rest here is just doing a little bit of calculator work, where I'm going to take 0 0.8 multiplied by 1,000 meters. This new meters unit... I pick up and tag to my new answer, and when I divide by one kilometer, this kilometers divided by kilometers is going to cancel out, just like anything divided by itself. Then I just use the calculator, 0 0.8 times 1,000 divided by 1 is 800, and now my new unit is meters. Now you can actually do this problem a lot quicker if you know how to move your metric uh, conversion prefixes where if I can kind of copy down the chart, we have kilo, hecto, deca, our base unit, deci, centi, and milli where if I move from my old unit to my new unit, my decimal point is going to move the same way. If I'm going from kilometers to regular meters, I'd be going one, two, three spots to the right. And so my decimal point on 0 0.8 should also go one, two, three spots to the right and land here. Any blank spots I can throw zeros into. So 0 0.8 kilometers is the same as saying 800 decimal point regular meters. So if I know I'm doing a metric conversion, this is a lot quicker to do it the kind of shortcut way. But I've now verified that this math way of doing it does get us the same answer. It's kind of the official way that works every single time you do a unit conversion, as long as you have the conversion factor that takes you between the old and the new unit. This is just kind of a shortcut that gets us the same answer as the math, just without the math part. Now let's take this a little bit of a step further. If this tortoise takes two hours to move this many meters, 800 meters, what is the tortoise's rate of movement in meters per hour? Hmm, okay. Now in this case, 
it's not really asking me to convert this unit. It's just saying that I'm taking the meters unit that I had before, and I'm taking it per hour. And what does that mean? Um, well, I have a slash here, m slash hr for hours. And usually if you see this slash, it's used for fractions, which is, again, another way of saying dividing. Like if I say 1 slash 2, that usually means 1 divided by 2 or 1 half. So this meters slash hours means basically my meters divided by the number of hours. So let's do that. I'm going to take 800 meters, just like I had before, and divide it by the two hours it takes for the tortoise to move 800 meters. Okay, well I can take this in a calculator, 800 divided by 2, and that gets me the number 400. Now, unlike what I had up here when going from kilometers to meters, where I had kilometers divided by kilometers and they canceled out, I don't have anything where meters divide by meters or hours gets divided by hours. These units just kind of are left here. There's nothing for them to cancel with, so I guess I kind of have to keep both of them. Okay, so the way I write this unit is that I still have the meters, and I'm still trying to divide by this hours unit, so I put a slash and put it right there. Okay. Whenever you say this per part right here, that's basically just saying divided by that many of something. If you get paid per hour, then for however many hours you work, you multiply by that many hours and you get that paid that much. This tortoise is moving at a rate of 400 meters per hour. So if it moves for two hours, then it's going to go twice this distance. And if it moves for three hours, it's going to go three times this distance. If it moves for only a half an hour, it's only going to go 200 meters. Okay, This rate relates both the meters and the hours of how fast this tortoise is moving. You can also rewrite it as a fraction, where this tortoise is moving 400 meters for every one hour that it's traveling. This works the same way as this. Mathematically, it's the same. It's just that this is a little bit cleaner. Um, so you'll a lot of times see it written like this. Same goes for like speed signs where you'll see like MPH is miles per hour and things like that. Okay, it's just kind of a preference thing. All right, so sometimes we end up with multiple units in the same problem and they don't cancel each other. We just kind of have both of them still around like we do rates like this. And you'll see the same thing happen with density problems. If I have the density of an object as its mass divided by the volume, its density, when I take the mass divided by the volume, is going to have some number of grams divided by a volume in, say, milliliters or cubic centimeters. So maybe an object's mass, uh, mass divided by volume gets us 7.14 grams Oops. grams for every milliliter of volume it takes up. Okay, both units are still there, okay, because they both mean something to the measurements. It's saying how much mass is there in a certain amount of volume. And if I had twice as much volume, I would have twice as much mass. Okay, so then what happens if we have to make a conversion with a unit that has another unit with it, like one of these, where we've got not just meters and not just hours, but both of them together in the same measurement. Um, the easiest way to deal with problems like this, if we're going to make a conversion with something like a speed in meters per minute, is to write it like this, where I can clearly see both parts here, where I've got the meters and that per hour here, and I want to change it to meters per minute. Okay, so just like before, first things first, I'm going to rewrite my measurement. 400 meters divided by one hour. That's my meters per hour rate of movement that I had before. Okay, And just like anything else, if I'm trying to change a unit, I need a conversion factor. So I'm going to multiply by a fraction that has my old unit and my new unit. The old unit I'm trying to get rid of is hours. And my new unit is going to be minutes. I want to be able to pick up the minutes unit in place of the hours unit here. So I want to make sure these cancel out. 
okay? Now, usually, when I try and get rid of old units, they end up on the bottom of the fraction bar of that conversion factor. So I would have hours down here. But then I end up with kind of a problem here. Since I'm multiplying by the top and dividing by the bottom, I would end up dividing by a number of hours, which is usually exactly what I want. Except hours is already being divided. And the goal here is to get it to be divided by itself. So if I already have hours being divided, dividing by hours again is not going to cancel that unit. It's kind of like taking 1 over 32 times 1 over 32. Okay? This 32 is being divided, and so is this one. But if I multiply these two, these don't cancel out to 1. I get... 1 divided by whatever 32 times 32 is, which is not what I'm going for here. If I wanted to get these to cancel out, and I already had something divided by 32, and I want to get rid of the 32, I need a 32 on the top. So that way, the top and the bottom cancel out. It doesn't matter whether your old unit or your new unit comes first or second, whether it's top or bottom, first or second, but in order to get these to cancel out, I do need 1 on top and 1 on the bottom. So if I already have my hours unit on the bottom and I'm trying to get rid of it, where I need it to be to cancel is on the top. So I'll have one unit of hours on the top here, one on the bottom, and hours divided by hours will cancel. It could be your old unit is up here and down here, or it could be your old unit is down here and up here. doesn't matter as long as one's on top and one's on bottom, not both on the top and not both on the bottom. Otherwise, they won't actually cancel each other. My new unit, in this case then, of minutes, is going to go on the bottom. So 95% of the time, our old unit goes on the bottom. But if your old unit is already on the bottom, it's in the denominator of whatever measurement you have, then to cancel it, we actually have to have it up on the top. From here, the rest of the process is the same. It's just kind of flipped upside down. There are 60 minutes in one hour, regardless of what measurement I'm trying to change or which one goes on top and which one goes on bottom. So I just need to make sure that those numbers go with the correct units. There are 60 minutes in one hour, not 60 hours in one minute. So regardless of what happens over here, this needs to be whoops, set up as 60 minutes in one hour. So... This tells me that in my calculator, I'm going to need to take 400 times 1 and divide it by 1, which is still 400. And I'm also going to take 400 divided by 60. This part's going to change my answer. 400 divided by 60. Okay. My answer is 6.66 and a whole bunch of 6s, which you could write as like 6 repeating, or you could round it up to like be like 6.667 or something like that. My unit, my meters is still here. It hasn't been canceled out, so I still have meters. And I also have this unit of minutes that's being divided that has nothing else on top to cancel with it, so it's still there too. So I still have the unit of meters, and I'm still dividing by minutes, meters per minute. And now I've got my new unit. I've got my rate of the tortoise's speed, that movement, as 6.67 meters per minute, which is the same as 400 meters per hour. Just that now we're measuring for a shorter amount of time, so the tortoise goes a shorter amount of distance. If my tortoise is traveling for 6.67 meters in one minute, then if I let it travel for a full hour, then it's going to end up going a much farther distance, like 400 meters. Okay, so again, our unit conversion has only changed what the value of the number looks like. We're still talking about the same speed. The tortoise has not gone slower because we have the smaller number here. It's just a different way of describing it. Okay, and in order to get rid of a unit, it needs to be divided by itself. And in most cases, that means the old unit is going to be on the bottom of your conversion factor. However, if your old unit is already on the bottom, it needs to go on the top instead.